Imagine you were going to go to prison for a year. What would you do while you were there? Well, one of the advantages of going to prison, if there are any, is it's a good time to get some writing done. And legendary copywriter Gary Halbert understood that very well, which is why when he had to go to prison, he spent a lot of time writing letters to his son that contained messages about marketing and about life in general. Gary Halbert's son Bond turned these letters into a book which has become legendary in the marketing copywriting world. In the first letter, Gary Halbert tells his son that he should spend the first hour of every day doing quote-unquote road work, which is just his word for walking and running around. And he's probably right about that, right? Like starting your day off with exercise is, um, you know, it gets your, it gets your juices flowing, gets you, gets you woken up. I always feel better when I go for a run in the morning. He also has some very specific advice for Bond on what he should eat and when, right? So he says, first thing every day before you go on your road work, eat a piece of fruit. Then once you get done with your road work, eat another piece of fruit. And the day before, you should always cut up a bunch of vegetables and then you can snack on those throughout the day. You should eat some lean protein every day like chicken. And finally, you should spend one day a week fasting, not eating anything at all. I don't know if that's good nutrition advice, but you know, hey, it worked for him. He also tells Bond to develop nice strong arms so that he can impress women and so that people know not to mess with him. Most of the marketing advice he gives is related to standing out from the crowd, right? In marketing, it's very important to not sound like every other marketer because people tune out marketers, right? They don't want to listen to what marketers have to say. An example he gives of this is a catalog that he made with a bunch of items that people could order emblazoned with their family crest, right? So you get like a coffee mug with your family crest on it or a mouse pad or something like that. And the catalog totally bombed, and then he made another version of the catalog, and that bombed too. And then what he did was he took the best-selling item from the catalog and just wrote people a letter saying, hey, would you like to buy one of these emblazoned with your family crest? And they were like, yeah, we'd love to buy one of those emblazoned with our family crest. Part of the reason why he thinks that the letter was more successful than the catalog is because it didn't feel like a sales pitch, right? The catalog, like, you know, businesses send people catalogs all the time. They mostly just ignore them. But when you get a letter from somebody, it feels like you know a friend sending you a message. You pay more attention to that. Another trick he talks about is offering people a special deal, right? So if he has a list of chiropractors, he'll say, you know, I'm making you this offer because you're one of the best chiropractors in the Los Angeles area or the best chiropractors in the Boston area or whatever. And that makes the offer feel more personal and it makes people more likely to buy. Another thing he says is that when you're starting a business, you shouldn't start with the product. You should start with the marketing, right? Instead of figuring out what you're going to sell, you should figure out who you're going to sell stuff to. And then once you figure out who you're going to sell stuff to, then you figure out what to sell them. That sounds backwards to most people, but it makes sense because businesses usually live and die on their marketing, right? Like if you have somebody who they're really good at making a product, but they suck at marketing, they're usually not going to succeed on their own in business. Whereas somebody who's really good at marketing but sucks at making products will often do very well in business. Because at the end of the day, even if you have a really, really good product, uh, if you can't convince people to buy it, you're not going to make any money. Even though Gary Halbert's best known as a copywriter, the Boron letters contain very, very little advice on actually writing. And one of the things he talks about is the ADA framework, attention, interest, desire, action, which is pretty standard in the marketing world these days. Another really good piece of advice on writing that he gives is you should use picture words when you write, right? Which are words that create very, very vivid pictures of what's going on in your reader's head. So the example he gives is instead of saying, doing this will increase your sales, you should say, doing this will cause you to make a bushel of money. This is really good advice because the human brain makes sense of stuff by creating pictures of it. Right? If you can't create a mental picture of something, then you don't really understand it. Neuroscientists like to say there's no comprehension without picturing. And this is why it's really hard to understand contracts and academic papers is because they use all kinds of incomprehensible jargon that is hard to create a mental picture of. And then the final piece of writing advice he gives is to give your reader eye relief, which basically just means using words that are easy to read. Right? You don't want to be using big technical terms, you don't want to be using you know, 12th grade level words, you just want to write in a simple way that anybody can understand. This is good advice because reading is actually really hard work. Our brains evolved to speak and to listen, but reading and writing are things that human beings invented you know, a few thousand years ago. And 
it takes a lot of effort to do them and do them well. And most people aren't going to put that much effort into reading an advertisement. So an ad copywriter really has to make things easy for their reader. Marketing's changed a lot in the past 40 years, and a lot of the tactics that Gary Halbert talks about in the Boron Letters just don't apply anymore, right? Like, you don't need to know what part of an envelope to put a stamp on. You don't need to know how to enclose a return envelope, etc., etc. But the principles behind why Gary Halbert did things the way he did things still very much apply. That's because even though marketing has changed a lot in the past 40 years, the human brain hasn't, right? People are still the same as they were in 1980 or 1880 or 800 BC. And so the sorts of things that Gary Halbert used to make a direct mail campaign successful, if you take those same principles, you apply them to internet marketing, they'll make your internet marketing campaigns more successful. And that's why it's so important to study guys like Gary Halbert. That's it for today's Theo's Book Club. If you're new here, my name's Theo. I make short videos like this one going over the big ideas in the books that I read so that you can learn the stuff that I learned and decide whether you want to read the books for yourself. If you like this video, I hope you'll hit the like button down there. I'll just give a nice thumbs up. That'll tell YouTube to recommend this video to more people. I would greatly appreciate that because I'm trying to grow this channel. Also, if you want to hit the subscribe button, you'll see my smiling face pop up in your feed more often, and you'll get to enjoy more Theo's Book Club. So, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.